It's about to get real fishy up in here. Mm -hmm. Hey you guys, it's Christina and I am so excited to be back on YouTube. I've been gone for a little bit of time. I just got back from my Costa Rica retreat a few days ago and before that I was doing my five day juice cleanse challenge. So I've taken a little bit of time off from YouTube, not intentionally, I've just been crazy running around, busy, and I'm really excited to be back with you to dive into this space to talk about a topic that is really important to me and wean myself back into YouTube a little bit. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five reasons why I will never eat fish again. Besides the most popular question of where do you get your protein as a vegan or raw vegan, the next most popular question that I get asked is, do you eat fish? I'm gonna be giving you my five reasons in this video today. And for those of you who are wondering, I have put all of my citations and sources below, just letting you know I did not make any of this stuff up. And if you're not really into gross details and maybe don't watch the rest of this video, just know it's not on my list of things that I eat or will ever eat again. I definitely, definitely, definitely did not make this stuff up. Before I jump into these five reasons, I just wanna share with you that I have been a fully raw vegan for almost 14 years now. It'll be 14 years in July, and I have never once cheated. I haven't had a desire to eat any kind of meat or fish or dairy. I'm not even considering going back to that lifestyle. I'm not even close, hence the reason why I'm making this video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because it is about to get more epic. I'm about to get in the kitchen and film some new recipe videos for you guys. I miss making recipe videos. Also, if you're interested in joining me in my Bali retreats, I have two coming up, one in October and one in November. These transformative retreats are insane, amazing, and I would love to have you join us. If you are interested or want more information, the links are in the description below for you. Whew. All right, are you guys ready? Let's go ahead and jump right into the topic of today. Let's get started. Reason number one, a personal and interesting fact from me that you may not have known, I am highly allergic to shellfish, crustaceans, and most types of fish. I bet you didn't know that fact about me, but yes, it's true. The smell to me is usually very unbearable, being around any kind of dead fish. And when I was little, we discovered this because I would hive all over my body and they weren't just normal hives. I mean, I would turn red like a tomato all over my body and it would usually be followed by tons and tons of vomiting. So for those of you who are ever wondering or whoever asked me if I cheat on my diet by eating fish, the answer is a definite no. I cannot stand fish more than any other product on the market. It is literally my worst nightmare of anything to put in my body. So there's your answer for you. And I would just like to add on top of that, even if I weren't allergic, knowing what I know now, I still would not consume fish, crustaceans, any type of animal that comes out of the ocean. All right, so now that we have gotten my personal and interesting fact out of the way, we can dive deep into the more important reasons I believe we should not be eating fish. Number two, environmental impact and ocean pollution. If you're somebody who cares at all about the environment, do not eat fish. If you're not aware of how polluted or contaminated our ocean seas and rivers are right now, I invite you just to Google it and do a little bit of research for yourself. There are so many articles on the internet about how contaminated and polluted our waters are. Not only is tons of trash being dumped into our water daily, but also sewage, chemicals, and so many other things that you cannot possibly imagine. Our water on this planet has become the cesspool of where we live. If you wouldn't walk to your nearest river or stream and grab a cup and drink the water out of that stream, why would you eat the animals that live and swim in that water all day? Some interesting information is that most people don't realize that modern day fish that you buy in the grocery store comes out of a commercial fish farm. That's right, they commercially farm fish. And most of these trawlers, so they call them, are usually the size of a football field. 
and they basically scoop up the fish with huge nets that can be up to a mile or more long and they can pick up up to 800,000 pounds of fish and other matter in these nets. And in the process of picking up these fish, they damage the coral reefs, they pick up trash. Some interesting facts that I'm gonna read for you right now are trawlers scrape up ocean bottoms, they destroy coral reefs, half the fish and other sea creatures obtained through commercial fishing are fed to animals reared for food, including farmed fish. So basically, farmed fish are being fed other dead fish. Each year, about 30 million tons of aquatic animals, maimed, dying, or already dead, are simply tossed back into the ocean if they're unused. This destroys our ecosystems. Waters that were once beaming with aquatic life are now considered barren and lifeless, and they can be compared to a dust bowl. Number three, health considerations and poisoning. That's right, I said poisoning. Now, while all of these reasons are really important, I always like to dive in a little bit deeper into the health considerations of eating fish because there is so much that we don't know. On top of that, there are so many consequences of eating fish that most of us don't realize. The first main reason why eating fish should be a health consideration for you is because fish is heavily loaded with mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, and chromium. Fish is loaded with heavy metals that are poisonous to your body. As fish eat and live in our waterways, mercury accumulates in their systems. People who eat those fish are also eating mercury. If you've ever heard the phrase, you are what you eat, eats, if that fish is eating a ton of chemicals, garbage, trash, mercury, any type of heavy metal, you're also gonna be eating that too. Mercury poisoning has been known to cause nervous system disorders and reproductive issues, as well as developmental problems in children and unborn babies. If doctors are recommending for pregnant women to stay away from fish due to the high levels of mercury in this fish, why are we still eating it as well? Radioactive substances such as strontium-90 is also found in fish. I bet you didn't think that you could be exposed to radiation of some sorts by eating fish. Because biological magnification during movement up the food chain, pollutants can reach levels as high as nine million times that of the water in which they live. Think about that for a second. These pollutants have been linked to many health problems, including impaired behavioral development in children, Nursing infants consume half of their mother's loads of PCBs, dioxin, DDT, and other toxic chemicals, and the majority of that comes from eating fish. We're gonna dive into what PCBs are in just a second. Let's talk about parasites. My next point of why eating fish should be a health consideration is parasites. Not enough people are talking about the parasites that live in the flesh of fish, but trust me, there's information out there. If you Google fish and parasites, you will find the most scary and disgusting stuff on the internet that you have ever seen in your life. I doubt you would want to eat a fish that had parasites in it. Because we've depleted the ocean's fish populations, many fish, such as salmon, are farmed, and thousands of fish are crammed into these tiny pens, so the water stays dirty and diseases and parasites spread. To try to kill some of these parasites, farmers will add pesticides, antibiotics, and all types of chemicals into the water, which the fish ingest and absorb and pass those on to those who eat them. Biologists in Denmark found that more than 90% of certain types of wild fish were infected with roundworms and parasites. Researchers in Alaska found that all of the fresh caught salmon they examined in nematoid infestations and a quick YouTube search will turn up plenty of videos from people who brought home worm riddled salmon from the grocery store. Others have even contracted flesh eating bacteria from uncooked fish in sushi, which can be fatal. Which can be fatal. Now keep in mind, we are talking about all kinds of fish right now. Even the fish that people think are caught wild, whether or not they're factory farmed, 
they are finding that these things are across the board in all fish right now. Some farmed fish have even been given a dye to give them that pink color that you see when you eat them. Imagine that color of that fish that you've eaten is not actually the real color of the fish. In addition to this dye, these fish are given massive amounts of antibiotics to stave off bacterial diseases and sea lice. Farmed salmon are fed more antibiotics per pound than any other animals reared for slaughter. This contributes to increasing numbers of drug-resistant bacteria, making it more difficult to treat some human diseases. Just think about that for a minute. Maybe even rewind this video for one minute and listen to that again. That is so profoundly powerful. And last but not least, talking about parasites, in a six month investigation, the Consumers Union found that nearly half the fish tested from markets in New York City, Chicago, and Santa Cruz, California were contaminated by bacteria from human or non-human feces. That means these fish are soaking up in poop. In addition, fish often contain disease-causing worms and parasites. We're not talking about certain kinds of fish here. We're talking about the majority of fish that's on the market right now. Another health consideration is the omega-3 argument. A lot of people say, oh, you have to eat fish because of the omega-3 fatty acids. But what if I told you that you can get more omega-3s by eating plant-based sources without all the saturated fat than if you were to eat fish? Would you still eat the fish or would you eat the plant-based sources? For those of you who are questioning me right now, I've linked a few sources below for you to check out. If you're eating fish for omega-3s because you want a healthy heart, you're doing your body more harm than good. Between 15 and 30% of the fat in fish is saturated, which makes our livers produce more artery-clogging cholesterol. Not exactly what seafood eaters need, since six ounces of shrimp, for instance, can pack up to 322 milligrams of cholesterol. So when you think you're doing your body good, what you're actually doing is overloading it. Another health consideration is that fish has zero fiber. Fiber is essential for us to have a nutrient-rich diet. Fruits and vegetables are filled with fiber and other vitamins and minerals that our body needs. Fish basically sits in your body at 98.6 degrees until it's ready to be pushed out. Another health consideration, PCBs. Now I know I mentioned that word before. Let's talk a little bit about this right now and I have a definition for you. PCB stands for polychlorinated biphenyls. They are highly toxic industrial chemicals that have been banned in the US since 1977. They're slow to break down and they accumulate in the sediment at the bottom of lakes, rivers, and coastal areas and in the tissues of fish who live and eat there. The Environmental Protection Agency says that contaminated fish are a persistent source of PCBs in the human diet. These chemicals have been shown to damage the circulatory, nervous, immune, endocrine, and digestive systems. Something else to keep in mind as a health consideration is that salmon and tuna are big fish that eat other fish. So in general, the bigger the fish, the greater accumulation of toxic chemicals throughout their flesh and the more toxic chemicals that you're consuming as well. My fourth reason for not eating fish has to do with compassion and ethics. Now, I know that animal abuse is not really a priority or even a thought for most people, but what goes on in these factory farms is truly horrific. Now, for those of you who are a little bit familiar with animal abuse, I just have to say this, that chickens and cows and pigs are not the only animals that are being abused in factory farms. Fish are also being abused in their factory farms. Fish who are farmed rather than caught experience more prolonged suffering. And they have discovered that fish actually respond to feeling. They experience suffering just as we do. Today in the United States, to maximize profit, most farmed trout, salmon, catfish, and other fish are raised in the same sort of intensive crowding found in commercial chicken and pig operations. Like the chicken flesh industry, fish farming involves large scale, highly mechanized production. 
Thousands of fish are crammed into ponds, troughs, or sea floating cages so that the fish farmers can raise the greatest possible number of fish per cubic foot of water. In most cases, each fish is allotted a space scarcely larger than their body. Under these abnormal conditions, fish tend to suffer from stress, oxygen depletion, infections, parasites as we've mentioned, gas bubble disease, in an effort to prevent the spread of disease amongst the fish, producers give them large amounts of antibiotics. Here we go again. Even so, many fish die before their slaughter. For economic reasons and to reduce fish feces, most farm fish are starved for days or weeks before they're slaughtered. Now just consider this for just one moment. Most of these factory farms, some of them, if not all of them, are very aware that many of the fish that they have are either sick or induced with a ridiculous number of chemicals. And that if the fish are to live too long, that they could infest or make other fish sick uh, and create further issues. So what they do to cover up this issue, to make it look like everything is okay, is they throw out and feed tons of antibiotics to these fish and kill them before any real problems occur. After that, they sell the fish to us, they make their money, and the cycle continues. Just remember this, you vote with your dollar. So even if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, I disagree all this, but I'm gonna go buy fish, you're still voting with your dollar. Your dollar is supporting and fueling the industry that is partaking in all of this behavior. I personally have removed my dollar from this industry, and I choose to put my money into natural and organic permaculture farming, things that grow fresh fruits and vegetables, things that are sustainable for us. That's my personal choice after having learned this information and after having really dived deeper into the deeper meaning of what this is all about. My dad and my grandpa always say, if you really want to know about a product, follow the dollar. The last point that I'd like to make here in regards to compassion and ethics has to do with ancient time versus now. Now I have tons of people who come up to me and they say, oh, well in ancient times they ate fish, right? They had to eat fish to survive. That's what they did before. It must be okay for us to do now. My response to them is this. We live in a completely different world today where ancient times is definitely not where we are at right now. We have access to so many different kinds of fruits, vegetables, and nutrients nowadays, we're not in need of going to eat fish, especially factory farmed fish, to survive. We do not need to consume animal flesh. Animals were not factory farmed or raised the way that they are now, and they definitely were not chemically induced with antibiotics and pesticides and parasites the way that they are now. We have better options available to us that do not involve animal abuse. We do not need to eat fish to survive. We don't need to eat meat to survive. I've gone 14 years without eating meat and I am thriving. I am living here as an example. For me personally, I believe in the Garden of Eden diet. I believe in eating as many fresh, colorful, ripe, rich fruits and vegetables as possible to get the nutrients that my body needs. If you want to feel alive, why would you eat something that is dead? I'm not even gonna get into the emotional component of what happens to your body when you eat fish or animals. Maybe perhaps we can get into that in the next video, but I just have to say, eating fish doesn't just affect you physically, it also affects you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. For those of you who are into that, consider it research it a little bit, and maybe I'll do a future video on that as well. You can let me know in the comments. My reason number five for why I will never eat fish again, and this reason is pretty simple actually, I don't eat anything that has eyes. It's as simple as that, it creeps me out. I don't eat anything that has eyes. So now that we've gone over my top five reasons of why I will never eat fish again, Let's talk about some replacement items that you can consume in place of fish. One of these are flax seeds. They're extremely high in omega-3s. Yes, they have a little bit of protein in them and so many other nutrients. 
Other items that you could consider are walnuts, tofu, and even pumpkin. These plant foods provide health-promoting fiber and antioxidants in addition to all the other nutrients that they offer. They don't contain the toxic heavy metals and carcinogens found in fish flesh. If you're interested in healthy recipes and getting access to plant-based or raw vegan recipes, please check out my website and all of the online programs that I have there and my eBooks. Even download my recipe app that has more than 300 raw vegan recipes there for you. You can download it on the iTunes store or Google Play. There's everything there from smoothies, salads, juices, gazpachos, raw desserts. This colorful food is life-giving. It's beautiful, it's delicious, and it's nutritious. You definitely will not feel deprived, so if you're interested in any of my recipes, click on the link in the description below to get access to my programs or to download my recipe app. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me today. I have missed you guys, I've missed making videos, and I can't wait to get back in my normal flow. I hope that you've liked this video. If you have, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below, and maybe perhaps you can add more knowledge or facts into this video that I wasn't aware of before. Hit the subscribe button because there's only more to come and please feel free to share this video with your family and your friends. I believe so many of us need to hear this message. I cannot wait to see you all in my next video and I'm sending you all my hugs and my love.